everyone, this is Tosha and as you already know, we have had this week-long pillar against PCOS, that is Polycystic Ovarian Syndrome and we are very pleased to have Dr. Tanika Dalkutta, who is one of the most celebrated gynecologists of Kolkata. So, I welcome Dr. Tanika Dalkutta. Thank you. We are very pleased to have you here. And uh, she's going to ask, she's going to answer all the queries that I have for PCOS. Now, my first question to uh, Dr. Dasgupta would be, uh, what is this uh, PCOS, like polycystic ovarian syndrome? Well, uh, PCOS is a, a compilation of a lot of symptoms. For example, menstrual irregularities, fertility problems. So it's a, a huge, there are kind of some criteria which is, we need help, uh, which for us, we diagnose with some kind of some symptoms. Okay, so as you said, uh, this is a compilation of symptoms. Uh, what are uh, uh, symptoms you have frequently seen in uh, patients with uh, PCOS? Okay. So small girls like adolescents who are unmarried, below 20, so they come up with problems with menstruation, mostly, that is abnormal uterine bleeding. For example, some patient complains they are uh, having continuous irregular bleeding. Some patients complain they are not having periods for a long time. For example, two months, three months, four months, even as long as eight to nine months gap in their periods. Mm -hmm. So that is the most common symptom. You know? And then along with that, some people say, some people, when some girls say okay, they are having increased amount of hair, facial hair, or uh, hairs in the thighs, hairs in the abdomen, which is not common in girls. So male type of hair baldness, hair loss, lot of acne, and some people who are married, like some girls who are married, they complain, come up with not being able to conceive, not being able to lose weight, having a lot of depression. So these are very kind of symptoms they come up with. Okay, um, see, I have heard these two terms like PCO and PCOS. So this word syndrome, is it significant? What does it mean? Yes, um, I tell you why. Because, you know, some patients come to our OPD with a um, lot of apprehension that madam uh, I have developed a lot of cysts in my ovary so is there is, is it an operative emergency so actually not this is the myth and this is where I would like to tell people that polycystic ovarian syndrome is not an operative condition so it is a mainly a hormonal disbalance so first of all we have to realize it now PCO means polycystic ovaries right Polycystic ovaries are found in ultrasound picture, like ultrasonography pictures, there are certain criteria like small, small peripherally placed follicles we can see in the uh, ultrasound, uh, ultrasonogram. So that diagnosed PCO. Okay, so now this is not the PCOS typically because out of this PCO, polycystic ovaries, only 6 to 7 percent is PCOS, which is bothersome. So PCOS is a syndrome, there are criteria by which we diagnose. For example, I would say those three criteria. If some patients come with uh, menstrual irregularities like delayed cycles along with PCO like a picture in the ultrasound. Mm -hmm. So two criteria, so they are PCOS. Mm -hmm. Now some patients come with uh, policy, uh, PCO in ultrasound picture and raised testosterone level in their blood picture like one test in the hormone is their testosterone we give them to test blood test if that is that value is raised and they are having simultaneously ultrasound picture of pco they are pcos so somewhere somebody having raised testosterone in blood blood picture and having a period irregularity they are pcos so three criteria is mainly for example period irregularity number one number two having pco like picture in the ultrasound and having increased facial hair or increased um, testosterone level. Any two out of the three, we call it PCOS. So that is it. Okay. So uh, I have come across uh, people talking uh, about PCOS and they have various kind of uh, thoughts about it. So uh, one particular thought has always bothered me that it's life, life threatening. Is it so? Is it life threatening? So directly not, but indirectly if you Come to think of it, if you do not take any uh, precaution about it, you do not try to prevent it, you do not try to treat it, then in the long term it might. For example, uh, it has been seen those who are long term PCOS or they are not treating it, not doing anything about it, they might land up in diabetes, they might land up in high blood pressure, they might land up in 
chronic depression syndrome they might land up with eventually cancer cancer for example reproductive system cancer uterine cancer because uh, since i'm telling you look, this is a hormonal disbalance certain kind of hormones increases in the body if you do not do anything to reduce it or keep it controlled they might in future in the long term health they might cause increased bed what you call endometrial increased thickness of endometrium so that might land up in cancer so in indirectly definitely it is life threatening if you don't do it anything right now it's not directly no no it is not indirectly all right uh, but uh, how frequently do you come across patients who are like who, who are suffering from pcos or pcos like, how frequent uh, are these this is nowadays our uh, personally i believe this has become really frequent because earlier it is uh, tagged as like 10 to 20% of the population is pcos adolescent girls or anything any woman now i have seen out of every alternate female girl who comes to my clinic is a pco like they are coming with the menstrual irregularities they are coming with a heavy weight not being able to reduce the weight so having an increased hair on the face so uh, now with the incidences have increased i think because of our lifestyle mainly not being able to work out not being able to you know um, having good food or healthy food instead of uh, having junk foods more mainly so that is what i think Um, again, uh, there was one thing which uh, I was looking up in the internet, and um, so I was going through some articles, but I couldn't really pinpoint the exact cause of PCOS. Like, there are varied uh, opinions on uh, the, the cause of PCOS. So, so because uh, still not uh, now, the cause has been actually been. Uh, we could not come up with a particular one particular cause cause that is why pco uh, in our medical field also we are doing a lot of research in all over the world they are trying to find out the cause so some mostly it has been seen the genetic causes that their environmental and uh, some food factor toxins the kind of food we eat nowadays as we have already seen we have you know, we know that a lot of pesticides a lot of artificial foods that we are eating indirectly or indirectly so that might also cause some relationship with the like if in your family if your father or mother is diabetic one of the daughter with some pco so there might be a genetic cause also so still that is why we say it is not curable but it is definitely preventable if you do something to control it um but then you mentioned it like it's so uh, this happened and this happened because uh, there is an imbalance in hormones so uh, So, is it really a gynecological disorder or is it a endocrinological disorder? It's a good question. Uh, to lay people, those who do not know the distinguish, I would say if some girls uh, are diagnosed with PCOS, they can go to both the persons. They can consult gynecologist as well, those who deal with the reproductive female reproductive system, mm -hmm. and uh, endocrinologist is nothing but those who deal with the hormones. So, both the, both of them are able to deal with the PCOS patient. so if it is it, it has something to do with the hormones and gynecology being a female a uh, female part so we both can deal with the issues so that is it uh but then uh, is there any kind of a treatment which completely heals you uh, or takes you out of this uh, syndrome as i said the uh, pcos is a hormonal imbalance right so we have to keep those hormones in control by taking regular medicine and also the first and foremost treatment what we say whoever comes up in our clinic first is exercise even if you are thin mostly the pcos patient we come up, they come up with the a bit, bit fatty or bit uh, on a heavier side of the weight weight so we say take them regularly work out even if you are lean then also you work out and having a maintain a good healthy lifestyle in terms of a good food regularly maintain balanced diet not having junk food so that is the main treatment portion by doing that half of the pcos get controlled now the rest of it so to control the regular cycle I mean, to regularize the menstrual cycle to regularize the acne to uh, do the blood test if the testosterone is raised to control the testosterone by taking some medicines if you're if you're uh, having insulin resistance insulin is also a hormone which helps to metabolize the glucose but the pco have a resistant fat like they have got some resistant fat that is why they develop the insulin resistance so that part also we have to take care about it so that is it um apart from uh, the general uh, symptoms or the general uh, things that they will face uh, who are suffering from pcos what all uh, health issues are directly linked with pcos uh what are the health issues i mean just 
in this platform. And then, uh, as you said, like diabetes, uh, heart-related issues are uh, like somewhat linked to it. So, uh, exactly how it happens and how why is it linked? As I said, it's a genetic, it, uh, it is genetic, so that is why we are observing actually. It is a little bit of observational studies going on. So, do they have some relationship? Mainly, it is with the diabetic part we have diagnosed. Some uh, mostly they are coming up with diabetic history of diabetes in their family. Some people come with PCO along with the hypothyroidism as well. So, these two hormonal disorders also come, I mean, it's like go side by side. Mm -hmm. uh, and lastly, my question to you. Why is the awareness uh, surrounding uh, PCO is it uh, crucial? Why do women need to be aware about this? Uh, I would say when some patients call up saying I have multiple cysts in my ovaries, so they seem to be very apprehensive. I would like I I want this apprehension I mean to reduce because it's not first of all this is not an operative condition as I said you do not need to undergo any operations to cure it. Since not curable in that sense because hormonal imbalance and since it's hormonal imbalance people fret again and again they are regarding losing weight you know they always want some shortcuts mm -hmm. so that is not possible so you have to really work hard to reduce your weight you have to at least 10 minutes a day that will do everything if you're a very good uh, uh, listener then 30 minutes three days per week would be more than enough to control your hormone levels because there are a lot of patients, a lot of girls, they come up to us and say, you know ma'am, after starting walk, walking out, my periods have, the irregularity of periods have reduced. Mm -hmm. So that is the point where we want to highlight that if you are aware that you have some disease, you know, just accept it and take it with you and gladly, I mean, Go to control it. Why to bother about that? You have PCO, you have PCO control it. What a big deal. I mean, we have diabetes. I mean, you can't do about it. It's a hormonal imbalance. What you can do is walk out, have good healthy foods. If you want to eat something, for example, in a 15 days, have one ice cream, have one bit of biryani, it doesn't matter. The next day you walk out. I mean, in that way, you can reduce the toxin. I mean, you can enjoy the life and also accept that I have something, so I'm dealing with it. It's not cancer. Right. You're not going to die. So, just be aware about it and be happy. So that is why I want this uh, PCO campaign to be all over schools also so that they understand I'm having it and accepting it and doing something about it. Right. So, yeah. uh, so there you go. Now you know that it's not it, PCO is just not something to be you know really worried you know worried about. It's curable uh, at times and at times uh, it can be you know tamed. So uh, thank you. Dr. Das Gupta for being so generously uh, intimated and we have a little token of appreciation for you from thank us. Thank you very much. Uh, Thanks for the TOT. You're welcome and uh, please be there at uh, TOT Facebook, Twitter and uh, YouTube pages as we still continue to talk about PCOS and related issues. Bye-bye.